Hello my crafty tribe, this is Artsy Maddie and let's make some sweet treat Valentine home decor. So I'm starting off with these sweet little mugs that I spotted at Value Village or Savers as it's known in the States and I'm just filling them up with some scrap paper and then topping them with a little piece of cardboard just to fill up the empty space in the cup and make it a little bit easier for the next step. So I just got it all fitted down inside the cup and then tacked it down with some hot glue just to secure it so it'll stay in place. And then I ordered some of this polymer clay. It's oven-baked clay. This was the best deal I could find on Amazon. So um, there's actually 45 different colors. You get a few little tools and some fun little jewelry accessories. So I thought this was a great deal. I'll have a link to it in my description box if you guys are interested too. Um, and I'll just show you what we're gonna do with it. So I cut off a chunk and I'm gonna soften it in my hands. And then what I'm not using, I just seal up right away in a Ziploc bag just to keep it from drying out. So I'm just gonna roll out um, kind of an even thickness of the black. And then I'm just using a Sharpie lid to ensure that I get four pieces the same size. So this just really helps control um, the evenness so that you can get a nice symmetrical shapes that are the same size. So I'm having <laughs> kind of a moment here. This should have been done in white. And for some reason, I just went and did the eye backgrounds in black. So you're going to see me switch that up in a few moments, but I had done a bunch of the other parts. So we're just going to carry on for now, pretend these are white. Also, I learned throughout this that if you just have some parchment paper down, it is a lot easier to work on. I thought this rubber mat would be helpful, but the parchment paper just works much better. So if you have some parchment paper, be sure to use it. Um, so I'm trying to make these faces super simple just with shapes. So everything I do is just going to be shapes. Right now I'm going to make some little cone shapes. So you're just going to roll out one end thinner than the other. And this is going to be our little mustache for the boy cupcake. And then I'm just going to squash down the top part of the cone to get a nice rounded shape and then curl up the tips of the mustache. And then this little flattening tool, I'm just gonna smooth it all out and give it a nice rounded shape. So then he looks less like a puppy and more like a mustache here. And then I'm so sorry, this got a little, I must have bumped my camera here, it's a little bit off of the screen, but I'm just going in and pushing in some lines into the mustache just to give the illusion that it's hair, that it's a, um, that it is a mustache and not like a puppy muzzle or anything like that. So then this is where I realized I should have done the eyes white. So we're going to go back in and change those out to white instead of black and then just keep um, the black shapes too. I'll show you. We're just going to cut those in half and then do it in the order I should have done it to begin with. So cut these little black ones in half. So you want about half the size of the little Sharpie shape. And then same thing, you're just going to squish them down nice and flat into circles and they start to come to life. Just nice, easy shapes. This clay is super easy to work with and it bakes really quickly. So I just put the oven at 250 degree Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. That was it. And they're nice and um, they dry nice and hard, no cracking, anything like that. They're great quality. So now I'm just going to put some cute little eyelashes onto the girl. So again, just rolling tiny, tiny little cone shapes that are a little bit thinner on the one end and then just curling them upwards like eyelashes. This actually stuck really well to these um, mugs. I was thinking that I would have to use some E6000 afterwards, but I didn't have to. I couldn't even get them off the mugs once they were baked. So um, just to keep that in mind that it's really great to work on these mugs with. Um, 
I'm going to show you another option in plastic though and just to keep in mind that the plastic cannot go into the oven but the mugs were okay to do that. So I'm just doing the little um, glistening white part on the eyes just to bring them more to life, give them more dimension. So just a, a tiny white dot and then an even smaller, smaller, teeny tiny white dot and just pressing those flat as well. So it didn't have quite the pink that I was hoping for. I just wanted a really nice blush pink. So I ended up just mixing these two together and it worked out perfectly and just got me that perfect pink that I was wanting. So you just take a minute or two and just blend them really well, just with your fingers. And there we are with that nice rosy pink color. And then just gonna go in and put in some more details. So just rolling up another little ball and that's gonna represent the little tongue on the girl cupcake here. And then with the rest of the clay, I'll just roll it up into a ball again, divide it into half, and we'll give her some sweet little rosy cheeks. So you'll get the hang of it, just a nice light touch so you can keep your nice little shapes that you're creating. So just showing you guys another option. These are from Dollar Tree. Um, if you're not able to find mugs like that, of course, that was a fluke that I'd found such a thing. But just showing you another option, just as inspiration, get creative, find something that you think would be cute for these. And I'm just poking some holes into it with my glue gun. Just being lazy, I didn't want to plug in my um, hot knife tool, so this works well too. Just want to squirt a little glue out after, just so no plastic's hardening inside. So this is going to be for arms and legs on these little cupcakes. I just thought this would be a cute little option as well. So we'll make them some eyes and some mouths as well. And I thought they should just be a little bit smaller. So I just found a little bit of a smaller lid on this tacky glue here. And again, just using it to get a nice uniform size on all the eyeballs. Now I won't be able to bake these directly on the mug, like I said, because these little cupcake things are plastic from Dollar Tree, so we cannot put those in the oven. So I'll just do them separately on the parchment paper and then just bake those in the oven and glue them onto the cupcake liners. So for the mouth, just flatten a nice black circle, cut it in half, and then we'll be putting the little details on the eyes again, just with those teeny tiny little balls. And I just have some pink ready for the tongues. So for the tops of the cupcakes, for the icing, I just made a cone shape out of some foil just pressing it down nice and firm. So it gives me a really great shape to work off of. I made these quite exaggerated. They're quite uh, tall and pointy. You probably don't have to go that extreme, but I just thought, why not? We're having fun. We'll go with the over-exaggeration for sure. So kind of think like a Hershey, Hershey kiss shape, just that little kind of rounded pyramid shape. And then once I had the shapes all created, just tacking them down with some hot glue to that cardboard, just so I have a nice, great shape to work on and create the whipped cream or the icing on top. So I have a big bucket of drywall compound. You can just use whatever you have, spackle, um, any polyfilla, whole filla stuff will work. I just added in a bit of baking soda just to firm it up, like to have it not quite so wet so it will hold the shape better and it worked out great. So I'm just adding some white paint, white paint, white acrylic paint to brighten it up. And then I'm just going to show you here poking in some little arms and legs. So this was from a scrap piece of electrical wire and I just stripped the wire and or cable and then pulled out the separate wires and then just made some little uh, arms and legs with the wire. 
So it's really easy to manipulate if you just have some needle nose pliers that works great. So this is just a nice simple solution just for inspiration as well if you think these are cute. So this was a trick I learned a long time ago from um, Sweet Sugar Bell, I think it's called, uh, her website, and she taught me this trick how to put your icing into some saran wrap just to help with the mess. So I've always kind of used this trick and thought it was great. So you just cut down the end of the saran wrap um, to be a little bit shorter and then tuck it down into your icing bag. So I'm going to be using a really big tip and it didn't fit with my regular tip holders. I was willing to sacrifice one for crafting, but it didn't even fit. So I'm just going to use some um, scotch tape just to tape this tip to the bag and then it ended up holding okay and it worked out great. So just poking that um, drywall compound down into the bag and get it going and it came out so nice and easy with that huge tip it was really easy to work with and the baking soda just kept it firm it kept its shape and dried really hard and I think they'll be um, very durable so I'm happy with them. I just let them dry overnight and by the next day they were ready to decorate. So just filled the bag up again with some white for the boy, for our boy cupcake here. Nothing too fancy, just getting it all covered with the compound. So then I wanted to mix up some light pink for the female cupcake, for the art girl cupcake. So I just used some of the, I think it's called Tutti Fruity. Um, deco art paint but just a nice pink you can kind of go with a deeper pink because it'll lighten with the drywall compound and then again just mixed in some baking soda get it put out on some saran wrap to help with the mess and down into the bag and then I just squished out a little bit to get it going with the pink So just nice and easy, really fun craft. And then I treated myself to some sweet little artificial cherries from Amazon. I will have a link to those in the description box as well. I'm super happy with them. I think they look great, kind of like the real thing, nice and shiny. Didn't have to worry about creating those. So I am just gonna glue some little teeny tiny faces onto these ones as well. So I made up a bunch of little eyes and mouths and stuff um, throughout the video you'll see. So for these ones I just glued on eyes and then I just drew in the mouth with a sharpie. Just tried to give them some funny little faces. Um, a great resource is if you just look up kawaii faces, just like Hawaii but with a K and they'll have lots of little cartoon faces like this for inspiration. So just using some E6000 once those are baked in the oven and nice and hard and got them all glued down to the little cupcakes and then just securing on some of those cherries. Probably just use hot glue for those. The E6000 took a little while to dry. And then I am going to make some sprinkles. Um, I knew that real ones would probably um, leak like the dye into the drywall compound so I'm just going to make some fake ones with some craft foam. It looks tedious but it didn't take too long at all. I think I was done all these colors in about a half an hour. So just cutting the strips to the length of the little sprinkles and then just like you just kind of cut down the line and just kind of create some skinny little rectangle sprinkles. So got some cherries glued on to these cupcakes as well. And then this will look a little tedious as well, but I just wanted them to be nicely, evenly spaced onto the cupcakes. So I took my time and just used some tweezers and just some white glue and then just placed all the little sprinkles on individually. Of course, if you didn't have the, <laughs> the stamina or whatever you want to call it for this, um, you could just always just paint on some Mod Podge and then just literally sprinkle the sprinkles on. That would work as well. So 
So I just tried to do them in fun combinations of colors, like different ones together. So then I got lucky. I found these little cupcake stands at the thrift store for half price. They're a little bit worn anyway, like the designs on them were a little bit worn. Obviously they've been used quite a bit. So I thought I would be able to get this printing off with just some acetone, but it didn't work. I even tried pure acetone, that didn't work. I tried some Varsol, that didn't work. So I realized I was gonna have to paint them. So I just went out into the garage with some spray paint and just gave them a couple nice coats of a metallic white. Actually, it's not metallic, I don't think, just a nice glossy white. And then here are the finished little cupcake couple. So here is the version in the little mugs. And then the cute little Dollar Tree version with the little cupcakes, um, cupcake holders that they sell. So I am so excited about this video. This is part of a collaboration. I'm finally collaborating with my YouTube bestie Favi from Arrows DIY and Mary Beth from MB Gray Designs. And we've all created some fun little sweet treat ideas for Valentine's. Um, so I can't wait to see what they've made. I'm so excited to watch the videos and I hope you are too. I will have links to both of their videos in my description box. As well, I'll try and add them into the comments too. So be sure to check them out. And then moving on, I'm just gonna create a whole bunch of eyes. So I have a whole, whole bunch of little treat projects coming up. So we'll try and move through them a little quicker. So I just kind of started working in um, almost like factory mode here, just creating a bunch of the little eyeballs, just different shapes and different sizes, but just the same thing. So you're just rolling out little tiny different sized balls and then just flattening them out with your thumb. And then I thought I would just create some little um, half moon kind of circular shapes here for some mouths too. Just instead of doing the half circle, just kind of a little line mouth too. And then I did some more of the half circles, just nice and easy. Um, this tool worked great for just slicing them in half and you can even just leave them attached like that because they break apart super easy once they're cooked and then some of the tongues I even just had them sticking out of the mouth a little bit more fun and cheeky So like I said, there's tons of inspiration if you look up um, the kawaii faces on, on the internet. So I wanted to make a little donut family and I knew for sure once I saw these little dog toys at Dollar Tree that this would work out. My inspiration was the little um, stuffy ones that they had at Target this year. I don't have a Target, I can't go and buy them so I thought I would just make some instead. So here we are with these dog toys and we're going to turn them into a little donut family. So there is that little spare piece of cable that my husband had and then I just stripped it all down to get those wires from the inside. Just shape them all into little arms and legs for the little characters. So it's really malleable, really easy to work with and if you have a needle nose pliers and then just a pair of wire cutters too to cut them down. And then I found this little bag of kitchen uh, food toys at Dollar Tree as well and there's little tiny donuts in there and then I also just have some little styrofoam balls to make the donut holes. In Canada we call them Timbits. Um, that's what our kind of most famous donut store is called Tim Hortons and then we call the little donut holes Timbits. So my boys love those. It's like always been a treat for them. So these are my little Timbit boys. <laughs> so just as a couple different options, the little Timbits or the little mini donuts. So same thing, we're just getting some little arms and legs secured in. Just using the hot glue to poke the holes. 
And then once the arms and legs are secured in on the Timbits, I just wanted to give them a couple coats of the drywall compound, um, just to kind of strengthen them a little bit and just get um, like a not so perfect finish on them. Just like as if they were just some rolled up little donuts. So then for the feet, I wanted them to have like a little bit more of a foot to help them stand. So I'm just using these little glass, they're not beads, I don't really know what they call them actually, but in the floral section, they're always in the floral section, glass gems, that's what they call them. So there was some tinier ones in one of the bag that I used for the little Timbits and then the larger ones for the larger donuts. So I just hot glued them to the glass gems just to get them secured. And then I gave them a light sand just so they weren't quite so um, jagged ridges. Like I just wanted them to be a little bit rough but not, not sharp or anything like that. So then I'm gonna wrap these all with some floral tape. So I actually just found some in the Christmas clearance section at Michael's but just you can find this at Dollar Tree or whatever as well and it, if you haven't used it before it's kind of tacky it sticks to itself and it's fairly easy to work with so what I did for the hands was just put a little tiny piece over the end and then just wrapping the hands and legs so this just secured everything so that I know those little stones will stay in place and then it's also going to make it easier to paint them um, just because the wire, I think, wouldn't take the paint as well as this floral tape will. So once I had all of the little legs and arms wrapped, I'm just going to give everything a coat of... Um, I started with this cashmere tan or I think it, that's what it's called, cashmere tan from Dollar Tree. And it just seemed a little bit dark, so I actually ended up mixing it with a little bit of white just to lighten it up. And then now I'm just painting the glaze on the donuts. So I did a chocolate donut, a pink donut, a little chocolate donut, and then I used a Tiffany blue for the other tiny little donut. And then just to make them look nice and toasted and not quite just so painty looking I'm just gonna make a little bit of a glaze so I love to use glaze medium it helps your paint be transparent and gives you a little bit of more work time to blend things together so I just mixed a little bit of that cashmere tan a little bit of burnt umber and a tiny bit of vivid yellow together with some glaze to make it transparent and this is just going to make the donut look more toasted and glazed and just give it more depth and dimension. I will have a link to glaze in my description box as well. It's something I really love to use um, with painting. I just think it kind of takes you to the next level with painting. So just kind of doing like a stippling almost type effect just to give them that little bit of of baked um, toasty dimension. So for the glaze, I just went over it with some gloss Mod Podge just to make it nice and shiny looking just like icing would be. And then I'm just gonna glue on some cute little faces and bring these little guys to life too. Just using some E6000. So then same thing with the sprinkles. I'm just gonna go in with some different color schemes here and just make each little donut unique. So this is the turquoise color from Decor Deco Art, which is made by Plaid. And then this one is just the Tutti Frutti, the darker pink. So again, just um, I took my time and went in and individually placed each sprinkle. If you don't have the patience for that though, you could definitely just 
uh, paint on some Mod Podge and then just sprinkle them to your heart's delight. So here is the little finished donut family. And my youngest just loves these Timbits. He just thinks they are the funniest little things. So here is the one with the little donut holes. And then you can take a look with the little mini donuts too. Whichever one you think is cuter. If you wanted to make a little donut family too. And then we'll just move on to our last project. So I'll go really quickly through this. Some of the stuff is similar. So I'm just going to go in with that cashmere tan mixed with some white. I have these little plastic ice cream cones that were in that little um, toy bag of fake food and then these were just some little squishy toys that are from Dollar Tree as well. So we're just going to paint this up as a little ice cream family as well. So I just went in with some nice soft pink, um, I believe, I think this is called cotton candy if I remember correctly, and then just a nice Tiffany blue color that I had on hand. So then same thing, I'm just gonna give that glaze over top of these little cones as well, just to kind of bring them to life and look like they've been in the oven as well. And same thing on the big ones too. Just that nice coat of glaze and then just wiping some of it off with a paper towel, you can just kind of pat it and it just kind of gives it that depth and dimension. And then we'll do a couple more cherries for on top of these cute little ice cream cones as well. So just gluing the little faces on with some E6000, making sure they're nice and secure. And then just got them all glued down to the ice cream cones with some hot glue. And then we'll show you the final reveal. So I just set these all up on my tiered tray. And in this um, portion here in the background, you can kind of see some of these cone trees that I've recently made on another video as well. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video if you're interested if you haven't seen that video yet. And hopefully you guys will definitely want to check out that um, video from Favi at Arrows DIY as well as Mary Beth at MB Grey Designs. I will have a link to those videos in my description box as well. I'll try and add those in the comments as well. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I hope this video has inspired you. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love it if you did. I don't know that it helps my channel that much, but it sure does help with the confidence. It's like a little vote of confidence with every new subscriber. It just really helps you to keep going, making videos and just um, feeling good about them. So I just want to thank you guys so much um, for being part of my crafty tribe and always coming back to watch. It means the world. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon in the next video.